Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Oh yeah, we're painting again. And today we have a black canvas with white in it. <laughs> so what I've done is I got an old brush and I've tapped in some black to create little tree shapes and all the way around and then uh, left this area white where the light is going to uh, zing through, hopefully. If all goes to plan. This is a light area. <laughs> and then uh, down here, I just sort of washed my brush, really, as I had hardly any gesso on my brush, and I used it just to put in this area. So let's go and have a look, see what we do, and uh, let's play. So I must mention, I've uh, tapped into some liquid clear first <laughs> tapped i dipped my brush in liquid clear and then put it all over the canvas and the reason i did that is it makes the canvas a little bit wetter a bit slicker and uh, makes it easier for me to put on this prussian blue which i'm putting on now this is prussian blue and uh, i'm really aiming for that white area for the sky but I'm also putting it everywhere else because <laughs> I don't mind it. Um, my other colours picking up the Prussian blue. I don't mind at all. So you can scrub this on anyway. <laughs> you could even use a, a toothbrush. <laughs> Although I wouldn't recommend that. It'd take a while, wouldn't it? Um, so I just used a big old two inch brush and. Uh, just throw it on there. Tend to use crisscross strokes. And then uh, as my arm starts to tire, <laughs> I start using my other arm for a bit. And then uh, if I haven't done it by the time my arm feels like it's gonna drop off, then uh, I won't go and, and go and have a sit down, have a cup of tea, come back and then finish it. <laughs> Don't feel like you need to rush. That's what I'm saying. Don't rush through these paintings. I, I paint a little bit faster only because I'm filming myself and uh, I don't feel like it's much fun for you to watch two to three hours of me noodling a painting. <laughs> so I like to, uh, you know, zoom through it a little bit. I mean, I'm not going 100% full speed. I could paint faster. <laughs> but then you, you've you got to have time for your ideas, don't you? You can't chuck paint on and not think about it. You always got to think about it. And a lot of the time I uh, try and paint before in my mind, the, paint, the whole painting. So I've kind of worked things out. And if there's something I can't quite work out in my mind, it set me up to a better position than if I didn't do that. So I can't remember if I said, but I tapped into a little bit of titanium white and I'm throwing that in into the blue just to lighten it a little bit, make it a bit more opaque than it was. So there we have a good start. You can already see um, a bit of a forest there's already something there. <laughs> These black canvases, though, they're so much fun. When, when when you darken it like that and you're painting the light, it really shows up. It really is fun. So I'm using a little bit of red, a little blue. That's vermilion, by the way. Vermilion red. Uh, a little bit of Prussian blue, a bit of white. And I'm tapping, tapping the one-inch brush. Tappy tap tap, and that gives you an even distribution of color. And then I'm going to use that shape of the brush to tap in my uh, little background trees. The background trees. You're just really thinking about the shape, the top shape of the trees. These are really far, and it's a little. There's a little bit of mist in between, so you can't really see them that well. <laughs> Sometimes when you're out and you, you want to paint something really misty like this. Uh, you go out with your paints, you get yourself set up 
and there ain't no mist. <laughs> Everything is just really clear to see. So you can't like do what you wanted to do. It's, it's, it's really funny that. And then you start going out painting and you're faking everything. So you might as well just stay at home. <laughs> No, it's very, it's very useful to uh, get out of there if you can and do some paintings in, in the wild, as you'd say. So I just tap in there, tap in the base. It's all very misty back there. <laughs> you can't really see much. But that's what we want. We, we don't want detail in the background. That's not our focus. The focus is when it comes forward. So using some sap green and a little bit of the, the red and the blue, we've got our dark. And this, this dark, this is the base colour, the base colour for the grass. Because we uh, didn't put any dark there, <laughs> we need to add it now. And, and that'll make it a little bit easier for us to put the grassy areas on because we, want, we need the grass to shine, to sparkle a little bit. And uh, so we need some dark for it to do that. So I kept tapping there as it comes down because I'm thinking about the path. I'm thinking about what I'm going to do next. So we've got the three yellows here. Cad yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow. Let's pull in the brush and then look at that little, little push there. You get a ridge of that paint on your brush. And then lightly tap, 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 tappy tap, tap. Y using not very much pressure, really. You're letting that paint just sit on top of the other paint, really. And, uh, and the more you tap, the more it sort of disappears. I think if you use too much paint, then uh, you get lines. You get like these horrible paint lines. <laughs> And I say that because I've done that. All all the m mistakes everyone makes painting, I've made them, so... <laughs> I talk from experience. <laughs> the most experienced artist that's made the most messes ever. Um, that'll be me. So, just tap, 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 tap. And enjoying yourself. I'm enjoying myself when I'm painting. I've become a bit addicted at the moment. <laughs> Every day I want to do one. I always want to. If I'm not doing a painting, I'm thinking about it, designing it in my mind. Or I uh, open up Photoshop and design it. So you're just tapping in. <laughs> oh, filbert brush. The filbert brush, yes, the smaller brush, control. <laughs> so I'm getting some Van Dyke brown and dark sienna on the brush. And thinking, see, how, see what I did there? That's me thinking flat strokes, thinking flat. I always do things like that with my hand before I commit. Um, I've always done that. People used to talk about it when I was at school. <laughs> he says, hey, look what Jason does with his hand before he draws. <laughs> and then he does the drawing, and it seems to work. I say that. Um, I didn't do that well at school. <laughs> but that's another story. <laughs> so I'm just putting a bit of light on there. On, the, on that path, just to bring it out a little bit. That's where the sunlight's hitting. So wherever the sunlight's hitting, we'll have a little indication of light. You see how that path is starting to come forward. So we're getting some sap green. Oh, I've got the hiccups now. <laughs> Sap green, push and blue, the million, all on the two inch brush. It just wants to be dark. And now we're thinking about these trees, these trees that are hanging down. 
And we're tapping in. Just tapping in some dark color just to, uh, we need to make a, a statement. <laughs> I'm making a statement, this is dark. And it's as simple as that. See, when you first start painting, everything's hard. There's a lot to learn. And uh, I'm trying to give you as much as I can to get you on your way, and then you'll be uh, creating amazing paintings in no time. And like I said, I'm, I'm still learning, so we can all learn a bit more quicker when we, when we help each other. And a lot of people don't do that, you know. A lot of people don't think in that way. They think, oh, well, I've learned this. I'm going to keep it to myself. I don't want anyone to know how to do it. And I think that's not the right way to be because if you are like that and you're not helping other people to learn, then that information is eventually going to get lost. And I think that's pretty sad. Anyway, <laughs> we'll change the world another day. <laughs> so I'm, I'm doing something. I don't know. I don't know what. I'm doing something. <laughs> See, I, when I'm painting, oh, I'm looking for a brush. When I'm painting, I get in this painting zone, painter zone, where I'm just going for the painting. And it's all about the painting, nothing else. It could be a bomb going off around me and I'll be still painting. I just, everything is just cut off. That's why I kind of like just painting. Um, that's why I've kind of set myself up in this way where I talk afterwards, because then I can really focus on the painting and then afterwards I can uh, take the mickey out of myself. <laughs> So using the liner brush, um, you noticed it was quite thin. What I did is I used linseed oil to, to uh, thin it out and then uh, got some brown. Nice brown. And I'm just picking out little branches wherever you feel there should be a branch put them in it's a good idea to aim for those light areas because then you'll be able to see it well that's what I tend to do I thickened it up a little bit there maybe there's one a bit closer it's another thing to think about isn't it how close do you want it and uh, how thick should it be because I, I technically the further away it is the smaller right not always <laughs> when you go in the woods you get some mighty trees that have got really thick branches and they're really far away and um, and it, it kind of ruins your illusion <laughs> it's like that in nature they're all different so we're going to tap into some more more of the yellow, just to uh, set that path down. Because when you, you tap in some grass, look, it knocks that path down. Because now it's got grass coming over the top of it. And then I'm thinking about light, thinking light. Where's the light coming from? Is there a bit more light this side? Well, why not? If that's the way we're going to think, then we're going to have to commit to it. And there we go, it sparkles a bit on this side, so now we know the light is going more this way. I know, you're thinking, well, we already knew this. <laughs> you don't have to explain it like that, we already knew. Well, just in case you've never painted before, then uh, I like to give, uh, give them a little tip as well. <laughs> So I decided that I went too bright and I, I darkened it a bit in places there. And then I lightened it a bit. <laughs> Nothing like the back and forth battle. But you see there's like spaces between the light. There's light, dark, light, dark. 
That's, that's the only reason I did that. So there we go. Let's get some yellow ochre, cad yellow, sap greens in there. So it's a bit darker. Using the corner of the brush, just tap, 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 tap. And you can create some uh, little hangy down branches and things. Wherever you want. Wherever the light sort of uh, zinging through and hitting some of these areas. That's where, that's where you want the areas to be a bit lighter. Don't kill all the dark. <laughs> It gets feeling good, you start enjoying yourself, you fill it all in and then there's no dark left and your light is just light and it, it won't work. Take it from me, I've done that before, it doesn't work. <laughs> you need the dark and light, dark and light. Like a, like a, uh, a chess board, you have a dark and a light. You need to think of your paintings just like a chessboard. And as you're working it out, think of it dark light, dark light. So look at that, just tapping, just tapping. I'm really thinking though. <laughs> I'm really thinking, right, there's a the light's gonna hit there and that's gonna happen. And on your painting, you choose where you want it to hit. And you choose the colour of the leaves. If you want yellow leaves, autumny leaves, if you want it to be the height of summer, you want a really lush green, or if you want like a, an orangey red or blue or purple, it doesn't matter. Whatever you want, you can do it. See? See? I was imagining I'm sunlight. It's hitting this bit. See, you've got to imagine you're, you are the light <laughs> and that's the way to do it. And then you can imagine your darkness and then you can put in darkness because if maybe it's uh, too light and uh, I'm thinking, oh, I haven't tapped any of that direction and now the light has to come through. Uh, I just thought, well, oh, the light's got to go through and hit that. So that means this side is going to be darker. So a little bit darker, sap green, a bit more of a duller colour. A little bit of red in there can dull your green. And we don't want this to be too bright and we'll leave some of these dark areas. You see, and we're working in layers, thinking about the layers and it's a bit darker and then I'm still using that darker green on this side as well <laughs> see I'm enjoying it I get carried away don't know when to stop <laughs> just having a uh, afternoon cup of tea in England we like cups of tea <laughs> if you're uh, wondering if you need to drink tea to paint <laughs> then you'd be correct now then. So I'm using some uh, Van Dyke Brown on the fan brush, uh, number three fan brush, and I'm just pulling down, just pulling down, that's all, that's all that is. You pull that down, load your fan brush both sides of paint, and then just pull it straight down, and you get some trees instantly. And also, these are in front of what you've already done. So it sends what you've done back. And I thought, oh, I could do some sort of a darker green there. Imagining this is dark. So 
So I'll put in this base colour. This is a uh, some sap green. And settle in those trees as well. And some dark. So we've still got to work this out. We've still got to work out where the light's going to come from next. We know it's coming from left to right. We have to think about where where there's gaps. So I was actually looking at this tree the other day and I'm walking down the road and there was this one tree on its own that was lit up. All the other trees around it was dark. You could hardly see any detail. But this one tree was lit and it looked amazing. And that's what gave me the idea of this painting actually. So I'm just putting in some Van Dyke Brown in, in, in the base, bringing it together. So we're thinking about the next layer, the next layer of light. Get some sap green, some sap green look, quite dark. Nice sap green. And just tapping, tapping some sort of grassy areas here. Now it's not very light here, so we kept it quite dark. And just tapping, just tapping and thinking, thinking about my next move. <laughs> Just tapping. And you can see, um, you can just about see anyway, there's, it's slightly lighter and slightly darker. And I'm uh, getting ready for the next bit. So I've been working on another painting. <laughs> And it's a, uh, I really enjoy it, really enjoyed doing it. So using the liner brush and some brown and a bit of linseed oil, just putting in a few branches on this tree. Putting in a few branches. So you just wiggle them out your liner brush, put them in wherever you want, wherever you want a nice branch you just put it in look at trees that you see when you're walking around maybe maybe if you walk your dog have a look at the trees when you're walking your dog or when you go to the shop or maybe you've got a tree in your garden you like put them in the painting just thinking about the trees Stick in branches wherever you like. And if you put them, put these branches over the top of the light areas, it sends them light areas backwards. So you can really create them layers. So here's the old palette. I'm getting a bit of light colour now. Bit of cad yellow in with my, uh, there's a bit of a pinky, bit of red, bit of yellow, bit of brown in there, <laughs> bit of white, making a, a light, thinking about the sunlight coming through vroom, and then hitting the tree. Like I was saying about that tree that stood on its own, it had a light just hitting one side. I thought maybe a few trees would have light on them. And the light's just glaring onto these trees. You could do this with a fan brush. It doesn't matter. I thought I would use the liner brush. And even on the branches you can do it. Let's see how they now they stand out. Just 
wherever you can bring it together and then as the paint runs out you can kind of go a little bit darker as you go around so then uh, after making these trees pop I thought ooh I need to get some leaves on there that also do that so with a one inch brush get some white try and get a bit of cleaner yellow <laughs> A lot of my yellows are a bit polluted. I don't mind it being a touch polluted, but I wanted it to be a bit cleaner. So I'm just tapping my bristles into the paint. There was quite a lot of paint on there, I've got to be honest. <laughs> and just thinking about the lights. Thinking the lights going onto the side and hitting these leaves. And these leaves are going to be really bright compared to uh, the ones behind. It's got a bit of red in there as well. A bit of variety. A bit of yellow, a bit of red. And like I said, you could choose any colour that you wanted. Just I, I thought I'd go for this. Thinking about the sun hitting areas. And just tap in, just tap the corner of the brush. Imagining the branches. Imagining the leaves, the way it falls. Yeah, and I, I was really enjoying this. <laughs> this is one of these things that you could really get into and then uh, you overdo. So I have this branch coming round. I quite like that branch. It worked. So I get some sap green into some yellow. Still using the one inch brush. I use that one inch brush a lot. Now I've got to think of the light that's coming around and hitting them trees is also hitting this grass here. So we've got to think about that as well. Think about where the light is, what it's going to hit. And then we can make it softer, softer as it goes away into the woods there we go just tap in just tap in just tapping in these light areas throwing in Little bits of yellow and red every now and then. But this this only works because of the dark that's behind it now. The, you've got light, dark, light, dark. <laughs> it's a really simple technique, but it works. And it's something you see a lot. Um, when you're in the woods. Not saying I'm in the woods a lot. <laughs> Getting looked at funny for, oh, there's that guy painting in the woods again as they walk past with their dog. Um, he's a bit of an odd one. <laughs> yeah, but I do like painting in the woods. <laughs> it's fun. You get to see a lot of different things that you don't see in the normal world of concrete and roads and people everywhere and in, in deep in the woods there's nobody around there's no the birds and the squirrels and things so it's fun 
It's a variety, isn't it? So I'm thinking the path as well gets a bit of sunlight. And you do get times where the sunlight starts halfway up the tree and then moves up and sometimes you get it where the sunlight's just hitting the top part of the tree. It's all different, totally. You get different times of the day, different times of the year, it all changes. So I've got to think about areas that aren't getting any light, areas that are. <laughs> It's fun. There's some areas that might get really diffused sunlight and it's, you get dappled light. You get all kinds of... Because uh, in the woods, it, the light comes at all directions and it's going through a lot. And it's all different. So I lobbed in, <laughs> literally lobbed in some dark here. So this is another layer Another, you know, like I said, the checkerboard. This is dark again. And then just moshing in. <laughs> and just putting in some dark there. And the light. The light's not getting to this bit, so this bit's dark again. It's all uh, a trick. We're trying to create a three dimension in a, just a flat canvas so we've got to use tricks this is a, a good trick to use that light and dark trick and then big tree lots of paint lots of dark paint and make it really thick because this is one's closer remember what i was saying about some trees that are far away, they're really big. Um, yeah, it doesn't always work for your painting though, because someone will look at your picture and go, well, that, that tree's far away, look how big it is. It's really, branches are thicker than the one in front of it. But sometimes it is like that, but this one, I thought, let's make it obvious. Let's make it really big. Bigger than the others. Lots of dark, lots of dark. There's hints of colour in there, hints of browns and but not much. Just hints. I just tap in little bits of brown there and here and there. But generally it's just dark. You don't see much there for mm, dark branches. So some dark leaves coming off this. few branches using the fan brush you could use the liner brush again it's up to you the fan brush is uh, you know, it's a good brush it's good fun to be honest when I traditionally paint do traditional style of painting I don't use a fan brush very often so it's good to use for uh, for this sort of technique because then uh, you start realising how you could use it traditionally. The fear is though, between traditional painting and uh, this style of painting, this wet and wet approach is exactly the same. And, you know, at the end of the day you're just chucking paint on a canvas. <laughs> A lot of the uh, masters, I mean, uh, Constable, if you've heard of Constable, he used to use big brushes to slot paint on. He used to uh, mix his paints and then he'd wait for them to dry a bit, get a bit drier, a bit like these sort of paints. And then uh, he would throw his paint on and you'd get all different colours because the colours he was using were a bit mixed up. So. If it's good enough for Constable, it's good enough for me. <laughs> so 
So here, here's a stage of painting which I like to call noodling. <laughs> it's where you have absolutely no idea what you want to do next. You know something needs doing, but you don't know what. And I've got to admit, I didn't know. I didn't know what I needed to do next. So I had to think. And while I was thinking, I was thinking, oh, maybe I need to just brighten this. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe this needs brightening. <laughs> maybe if I lighten a few of the uh, trees a bit more. Which does work, to be fair. It does look better. I added a bit more white and yellow. Really brought out a few more sparkles of light, which look good. <laughs> but then I was thinking, nah, it's still not right. There's still something not quite right. So I thought, hmm, I'll uh, use the liner and put in some light branches. Maybe that'll uh, solve the problem of this painting. <laughs> and yeah, I could have uh, accepted it at, at that point. I mean, there are some nice um, branches and things there now. But <laughs> that's not it. That wasn't the thing that wa that would make this painting a bit better. There was something else. I thought, oh, maybe it just needs this greening. If that was too red. Maybe it needs to be more grassy. Yeah, probably right. Uh, it does make it a little bit better, I think. It's good to have little bits of pink here and there and white here and there. But that wasn't it. <laughs> That wasn't what was going to make this painting that little bit better, that bit more finished. And uh, I just couldn't work it out. I actually, um, I had to stop painting and then I'd go make a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or hot chocolate or maybe I need to walk around and come back and have another look. <laughs> Always sitting back having a look and stand back and have a look. And then you'll work it out. Then you'll go, oh, I know what it was. I know what what I needed to do. It wasn't the noodling. This noodling that I'm doing. <laughs> Adding bits of green here and there. And so I don't think that was needed. I mean, I, I tap it away almost. But I think maybe it is needed. There's something needed. But I don't know what. Working it out. Here we go. The camera's back on. I turned off. I went away. Came back. Loads of dark. It needs a tree. It needs a foreground. Looking the left side, we've got a foreground tree. And it pushes everything back. This side, there wasn't. So, yes, as much as I like the branches and things that I did in the background, and I do like them, they don't help with the painting, so it was time for them to unfortunately disappear. <laughs> Needed the dark to show the light. So now those trees are nice and lit and they stand out a bit better and the composition works a bit better. That's how I feel anyway. You might want to do something different. Maybe you don't want this foreground tree. Or maybe you want to just light up one of the trees. Like I said, I, I saw that. It, so, um, so many different ways of doing it. And there I am, just, just throwing in dark. Throwing in dark. And remember, there's two ways of this technique to do, get your paint to go on top of the other. <laughs> One way 
is a thin paint will stick to a thicker paint. So if you don't want to mess up what's underneath and you just want it to stick to it, then you want it to be thinner. The other way is you just pile loads and loads of paint on there. <laughs> like I did with the dark. I piled on loads of paint and uh, just bringing it back a bit. And you can see that's pretty much how it was finished. And uh, and yeah, this dark goes just to show you from the back of the painting, from the light of the sky to a little bit darker where the trees are, to then the light coming here, and then dark again, and then light again, and dark again, just like a checkerboard. <laughs> That's what this painting's all about anyway, light and dark, light and dark, light and dark. And I hope you got something out of it, I hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully I'll see you at another episode. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you at another one. Cheers, bye.